In this segment, we're going to show you how to install a fuel water separator. Now, even if you have a brand new boat, you need to have one of these in there. Um, the water and ethanol is really bad for your engines, and this will uh, separate the water from the fuel before it even gets up into your engine. Here's veteran bass boat mechanic John Schwartzel of Schwartzel Marine in Hockingport, Ohio, demonstrating why you need a fuel water separator in your bass boat. This particular fuel in this container was taken out of a filter just like this, out of a boat that had set around this during the winter here. And you can definitely see the phase separation in the fuel there that's, uh, that's uh, in this. And there's a little bit of moisture in that, and that's the reason why you want to run this through the filter. And if you shake it up a little bit, the ethanol that's in the fuel, you look at it again right now, you can see it's holding it in suspension, but it's slowly raining out. And uh, it's old fuel. You don't store fuel, shelf life on fuel is about 30 days anymore. And with ethanol in it, it will absorb moisture and it cause you problems. That's the reason why you definitely need, need a fuel water separator before it goes into your engine. Because this will ruin an engine. And I'm also going to change my fuel lines. I learned from my good friends at Schwartz and Marine that uh, the old fuel lines in this boat are not uh, uh, sufficient to stand up to the ethanol. It deteriorates them. Also, I'm going to put a new primer ball in, and uh, I got a bunch of fasteners to hook everything up. So I have a busy day ahead of me. The first step is to find a place to mount uh, the, fuel water, the fuel water separator. And it's a tight fit in there for me, but it's right down in the middle. And I'll show you in a second. And you can see this works just uh, pretty much like a regular oil filter in your car. You just screw it on, change it once a year, and it'll, it'll keep your engine from having some serious trouble. The fuel water separator I bought lets you run the fuel lines in one side and out the other, or in and out the same side, which is what I'm going to do here so I can get the shortest route to my engine and my gas tank. Uh, I'm going to connect uh, the fuel line from the gas tank to one fitting, and the other fitting will go to my outboard motor and that'll run my fuel through the filter and eliminate that water getting to my engine. It's a little deceptive with this GoPro video, but I'm mounting the fuel water separator right under the splash well uh, at the top of the transom in the bilge area. It's right in the center. It's uh, the only place I really had to mount it. I'm fixing the base to the transom with strong 3 8 inch stainless steel lag bolts. Once I get this thing fastened, it ain't going anywhere. All right, I've installed my fuel water separator. Now I'm going to get after these uh, old fuel lines and replace them with the good stuff that will hold up to ethanol. So I'm going to start right here at the engine and work my way backwards. So here's, uh, here's where this fuel line connects. After clipping off the plastic tie that held the old fuel line in place on the engine, uh, I pulled off the old fuel line, I pushed on the new one, and secured it with another plastic tie. Okay, I've run the new gas line and connected it to the engine. Now, you want to make sure you leave enough slack so that when the engine turns, it won't stress the hose. So I just pretty much followed these other uh, cables that are coming up in there. What I'm going to do is uh, put my primer ball out here where I can get to it very easily, even when I'm fishing. So. I'm going to cut right here and attach my primer ball. And here's my razor knife. All right. And here's my uh, my new primer ball that will stand up to ethanol. And I put the attachments on it. So I got my primer ball attached, now what I'm going to do is take my fuel line and feed it right down through uh, where the old fuel line went. Here's my fuel water separator with the gas lines from the gas tank and to the outboard install. Guess what? We're done. One more thing before I button up the big engine. 
this boat did not come with a water pressure gauge. That's extremely important, uh, probably one of the most important gauges you can have. It will tell you if there's a problem uh, with water circulation before any bells or whistles or alarms go off. Also, uh, when you're working on your engine and propping it out, you know, to get the right engine height for the, uh, the optimum performance, uh, you need a water pressure gauge because you can jack the, the engine up so high that you're not getting enough water. Uh, and you need to know that because you can burn up your engine really quickly. So we're going to install a water pressure gauge. I have a, a kit that much everything I need. It's got a, a water pressure gauge, the hose that goes back to the engine, all the connectors. There's a, a spot on the dash with a hole already in it uh, that'll fit this can fit into. So uh, should have been one in there already. But if you don't have a water pressure gauge and I don't, it's, we're going to put one in there. All right, I'm doing my upside down act again. First thing I'm going to do is remove uh, the cover that is covering up this hole. It's a simple process, just can be done with a screwdriver. And there we go. There's our opening for our gauge. Let's make sure first that it's going to fit in here. Oh, yeah. That's going to do the job. Okay, before I secured uh, the water pressure gauge into the dash, I went ahead and, uh, and ran the water line to the hole and connected it. A little easier to do it out here than when I'm crawling around underneath there. So now we can insert it in here and we can find, find the back. And this uh, just secures on here with some nuts that come with, uh, and little washers that come with the kit. So we'll get back under there and get that done. Okay, I'm up under the dash here, and you can see this is the, uh, the part behind the water pressure gauge that holds it inside. Here's the water line coming out right here. And uh, if you want to have this thing lit up, when you turn your navigation lights on, these are the posts you need to hook it up to right here. Okay, I've run a wire up here to the console uh, from the back of the boat, back by the transom, so I can pull uh, this hose back through there. So I just uh, tape it up. Okay, now what I have to do is pull it back to the, to the transom so we can run it into the engine. Now we're just going to pull the, uh, the water hose for the water pressure gauge back here to the transom area. There it is. We've run the water line all the way back to the outboard. Now we're just going to thread it in uh, on this particular motor right, right where the fuel line comes in. And now we can uh, run it into the, uh, the water line so we can get pressure up to that gauge. All right, I've run the water pressure line out the boot here in the transom. And I've looped it around, giving myself enough place so I can turn the motor and it comes into the motor right here. Now I've run it along this side because I don't want to, to interfere with the shift and the throttle mechanism on the other side. And I've, I've come up right here and I've made a few ties, nothing too tight that would shut it off. Right here and right here, and we're going to run it into a water line right here on top. The water line I'm going to tap into, and this engine is right on top of the engine in between uh, the cylinder heads. It's right here, a quarter inch line. So I'm going to cut this line. Then I'm going to insert this T. This T came with the water pressure gauge. So I'm going to insert it into one side and then into the other side too. Just like so. Okay, now to the bottom of this T, I'm going to attach a, the line for the water pressure gauge. Okay, the final step is to secure all these connections with these little ties and they came with the uh, with the water pressure gauge kit so just wrap them around you know tighten them up and then we're going to cut them off and once that's done we're all done